Hello, everybody. My name is Eric, and today we're going to be looking at a dodgy Japanese software compilation from the late 1990s. I just happened to be searching around archive.org for Windows 9x malware and happened to see this extremely interesting ISO, so we're going to try it out. This claims to be a collection that was dumped from a, a dodgy CD from the 1990s in Japan. It is infected with the uh, Chernobyl virus, which is arguably the most destructive computer virus ever made, because if the motherboard was vulnerable to it, obviously a VM is not, uh, it will not just uh, hack the system, but it will actually uh, destroy the BIOS. So it's pretty insane. But maybe the more interesting thing is we have uh, Win97, which of course if you follow Windows lore you know does not exist. So that's interesting. Okay, now let's try our try and finally install Windows 97. This is kind of it's kind of creepy. I, I don't I I think this is just I think this is just glitching out, but okay. Okay. Uh now it seems to work. So I don't know if it was cuz I chose a different disk driver and that somehow affected it. Okay. Now we have actually succeeded. So here we go. If you ever remember the Microsoft uh, Binbo's meme, uh, this is this is the kind of bootlegging we're gonna get. So I'm gonna install this, and I've installed Windows 95 enough times that I roughly know. Okay, so it's actually then, despite being called a bootleg, it's not pirated, which is. All I also kind of find it interesting how it gives you the abbreviation for things like. Uh, company is C, and then that. I, I know ro like use of romanization is pretty high on computers, especially back then, because getting it. But it's actually doing a shockingly good job of rendering all of the characters perfectly well, G given this is extremely uh, old software. And Windows 9X did not even have Unicode, so I, I know it was a real hack getting it to work, but they did it. Once again, YNN. So if you end up with a copy of Windows 95 in a language you can't read, but you can read English, that's actually really helpful. Now, this one I don't know. We can usually just... Graphics might look a bit different, but I, I'm going to guess that's just a localization. I'm, I doubt this is that heavily modded. And it also comes with some software. Uh, it comes with IE4 and a few other things. Okay. Okay, so we're missing a file. Uh, also, ChatGPT says this is traditional uh, Chinese rather than uh, Japanese. Interesting. I, I did notice there were no kana. Okay. Well, let's hope that it works anyways. There's a funny glitch in the VMware BIOS where only the negative button works, so you just have to move uh, drives like that. Initializing device iOS. Windows protection error, you need to restart your computer. <laughs> Oh my, that's kind of a creepy uh, logo. So I did some Googling, and it turns out I happen to be running a CPU that just manages not to trigger the Endis error, because I haven't ran Windows 95 in a VM in like 10 years. And if you're just under the threshold for the Endis error, that does not mean you get away scot-free. It means you get a different error that is less common, because there aren't a lot of CPUs uh, that are 2.1 gigahertz that are still in use. Uh, just some weird server CPUs. Uh, okay. Okay, so we can remove uh, the floppy now. Let's see if we fixed. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I kind of messed up because uh, the thing on archive said this was a bootleg ninety eight. This is ninety five. And it seems like we've hit more missing files. Uh, okay. This is gonna be browse, I think. Okay. And now it's working weirdly. Okay. So here's Hong Kong. So I guess this is actually a Chinese uh, bootleg. Okay, so can we change that? It doesn't really matter. Okay, we'll just leave it at Hong Kong, I guess. Uh, this is printer drivers. We we don't have a printer driver. Or is this a CD driver? Apple Laser. I do. Okay. I'm just going to do skip on every uh, driver that I've never heard of because I don't think we need it. And it does work, but without networking, which is probably for the better on Windows 98. And we've even got a really old IME. 
So we can, of course, we're in 1997 because I don't want to immediately trigger the Chernobyl virus. Windows 97 got DFKZ, whatever that is. Internet Explorer 4. Photos. Is this Photoshop? Let's see if, yeah, it's Photoshop. Okay. And this is in English. Okay. I, I obviously don't have a serial number for a 30 year old version of Photoshop. So we're going to have to ditch uh, that. Uh, okay. So this cannot run. That's weird. This is something I've never seen. Fwin. What's Fwin 97? So that's a different. Now here's a different collection. I wonder if that's. I wonder if that's the secondary disc or something. No, there's no reason for that because, I mean, obviously you don't need two disks to install any of these. Okay, and this is, looks like some sort of WPS, WinWPS. This is a, like a word processor. This was before Microsoft Office sort of became the, the default. And we've got some drawing tools here. Write something. We've got Times New Roman, which is a, what well, was a default font on this version of Windows. And we got some Chinese fonts. Oh yeah, we got Internet Explorer 4, which we can set up. So we can't really use it because we don't have any networking stack, but it's never stopped anyone. Or maybe it has stopped someone. Okay. So now we can we can set the clock forward by a year, and I'm not sure if we're going to have to reboot uh, to show off what the uh, Chernobyl virus does. Minus, of course, the destroying of a virtual motherboard. Let's just set it to 1999 because I don't think it's, I think it just needs to be ahead of the state one year after the disaster, which is why it's called the Chernobyl virus. Uh, interesting fact, given this is uh, in traditional Chinese, which is the language spoken in Taiwan, is that the um, creator of this was a Taiwanese man who initially couldn't be challenged because of, because uh, Taiwan didn't have proper laws against There's some sort of uh, janky office tool from the 90s patch dot okay let's just try installing dfk 98 whatever that is whatever dfk that is uh okay this is going to be the installer sun uh, so it's a sun product or uh no actually this looks kind of this doesn't look like i think this is going to be a different sun sun way a company that i've not heard of it's probably some sort of like Chinese soft Chinese input software. Is this software? I'm not sure what exactly this does. It's some sort of input manipulation software. Let's try. Oh, okay. Okay. Now let's try setting it uh, to tick over right onto the payload. So I'm not sure if it has to tick over, if it just has to be past the date. And there's also, there's a few variants of this one. One of them uh, activates on April 26th, 1999, and the other activates in June. Uh, the April version is much more common. Okay. So I think we just got to let it be getting some... I, I don't know if it's just a random crash. So I, I'm starting to wonder whether anything said on that archive link was even true. I mean, this is Chinese, not Japanese. And it, CIH does not behave... Okay. That's kind of weird. So I had to create a password and not set one, but okay. So still no uh, obvious signs of any sort of infection. The only way uh, we can solve our uh, problem... Oh, okay. Norton has already declared our system to be virus-free, but... Let's see if installing an antivirus will help. The file... Oh! Okay, that's kind of interesting. So the Norton.exe has been modified. Got a brief flash saying Norton has detected a virus, but then it, it disappeared because Windows spit out some errors. But okay. Okay. So it looks like we finally caught, even though it's not doing anything, it does seem like it's... I wonder then if this is the June version... Well, we can set the date forward and see. F1. OK. 
Okay. So it's a few files currently infected with it. But not everything so far, because that's kind of its background uh, payload before the date. Okay. So now I think we just have to reboot, and now Avast should be installed. Now, it's kind of interesting how the installers for these really low-level programs have to be text mode, because it wasn't like just installing a kernel driver, it was it had to be installed on MS-DOS. And unfortunately, the CIH virus has also uh, got a kernel driver, so we'll have to try, we'll have to see if it still works after restarting. I'm going to have to force reset this because it's not shutting down, which is not a good sign. Oh! Okay. Seemed like that just got intercepted by something, but okay. I, I swear, whatever something about these old text mode systems is just kind of jump scary. But okay, so it actually didn't seem to work. Okay, so... Whatever the, the flashing thing is not from any of the antiviruses. So I think it has done something. It just doesn't quite work right. I don't really know why. I, I know it's possible that the VM hall disk just doesn't, but it should still kill the MBL. So I think that is going to be all for this video. This was a weird uh, OS and a weird description, given it is not from Japan. Uh, it, yeah, strange thing. Also, while doing some research mid-video, uh, one more thing I learned is that the uh, Chernobyl thing with this virus is actually a total coincidence because the author's birthday uh, is the same day, and uh, CIH, of course, is his initials. Not the most stealthy guy, but given it wasn't illegal in Taiwan at the time, you can kind of understand it, so that's going to be all for now. Bye.